And would Mr. and Mrs. Rarick of the American Legion like to lead us in the pledge? Please rise if you are able. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Recover. Thank you very much. Um, are there any comments or modifications you'd like to make to the agenda? I would uh, entertain a motion to approve the agenda. I'd like to recognize the agenda. And I'll second that motion. Thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, okay, that passes. Let's move on. Ooh, the best part. Do we have recognitions now? Dr. Hester? Yes, we do have recognition. Well, where are they? Oh, I gave them back. Oh, okay. Yes, we do have them. Just need to find them. I put them in the wrong place. That's okay. I'm just quite <coughs> all right. So we have a, a few recognitions this evening. Um, one of the, uh, the, not one of, but the, the first recognition that we have for this evening is, um, where are you? Laylee, will you come up here, please? Um, I want to be able to find so I can show that off, but I'm not locating it right now until right here. But Ms. Laylee Pollard, you get to stand up here. I know it's your favorite thing to do. Oh, there you go. There you go. All right, so Laylee here was uh, the winner of the middle school Central Region VSBA art contest that takes place. So um, within the VSBA, they separate the state into different regions, and we're asked to contribute artwork on behalf of our elementary, middle, and high school students. And so at this um, kind of you know one-day conference type of thing celebration, uh, Ms. Pollard's um, art uh, work and I will have her explain what it is consistent. <laughs> um, but I will say that it was of her dog, Blue. Um, this is just a picture of Blue. This is not actually what um, her project looked like. But uh, she's been recognized by the VSBA, which is really cool because her now number one piece of art. Oh, yep, up there. Everybody can see that. Um, her piece of work will be on display for an entire year at the offices up in the VSBA, which is located in Charlottesville. From there, we will want that to rotate back to here so we can continue to show that off. So um, we're so very proud of you. Um, I'm now going to give you a chance. I will let you off the hook if I'm allowed to read from there what it is. Okay. <laughs> um, so uh, Blue, this is our boy Blue, um, is titled, and it's a pet portrait that was done on Bristol board. And it's a, the medium is pen and ink using micro pens in various shades of, uh, it looked like, well, Stetler pens, but black and blue mainly. Oh, gosh. Yes. <laughs> and it's several thousands, right, many thousands of small dots that make up this picture. And so we just, I mean, I, I, that's so impressive to be able to do. And we're just so very proud. I also don't want to fail to mention that um, we posted this on our Facebook page, which by far, I, at least in the year and a half that I've been here, blew away the responses um, and such a positive response that you got by posting that. And I know we have a proud mom with that as well. So, Laylee, congratulations. That's such a big honor. Here is your, your um, uh, form from us. This is also the letter from the VSBA. So I just wanted to be able to say thank you so much. Congratulations. I think we may have some pictures that we need to take. Are we in a good spot? You are. So we're going to do this. <coughs> and I'm going to let you hold that because that is yours. And if I don't, I'll put it accidentally somewhere where I don't need to be. All right? We ready? We're going to look at this and we're going to look at over there. We're going to look over here. Look at your candy. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. There you go. Good job. Good job. So next up, unfortunately, this individual was not able to make it this uh, evening, but I did want to recognize, I think it was back um, March, in, in mid to late March, um, Bethany Caldwell was recognized by the Virginia Department of Education as a kindness ambassador. She is our school counselor at Rockfish River Elementary, and it was a really big event where the media week came out. It was a surprise to Bethany. They were able to celebrate her, I believe, in the library, in this 
coffee and Ms. Lanier and a lot of the rockfish individuals were able to be there to um, celebrate. So I did want to, even though she's not able to be here this evening, recognize Bethany Caldwell for being the Virgi Virginia Department of Education Kindness Ambassador representing Rockfish River Elementary. So I just want to be able to show this to you and say congratulations to Ms. Caldwell. All right, next up is one of our favorite parts of the evening, and it's uh, the presentation of our One Nelson Awards. And those of you that might be your first time here uh, in uh, at one of our school board meetings, the One Nelson Award is an award where we recognize four different groups of individuals in terms of their embodiment of a One Nelson mentality, which reflects the belief and the support that it takes everyone in order to support our students to be successful. So the first recipient that we want to recognize is Olivia Ramsey. Is Olivia able to make it this evening? No? Okay, that's okay. She wasn't. That's unfortunate. But I will go ahead and read what uh, Olivia was nominated. Uh, Olivia is a member of the JV softball team. She always practices and plays with energy and enthusiasm and is a positive influence for her teammates and others. She exemplifies excellent sportsmanship and kindness to her peers and her teammates. So that is why she's been nominated as uh, one of our recipients for the students of the One Nelson Award. And she will also receive one of our One Nelson mugs. So uh, why don't we give a round of applause for Olivia and Randy. Our next award winner is our community. As I said, we recognize um, four different groups of individuals, student, community, classified employees, and certified employees. So if Ms. Mary Catherine Dixon Allen join me up here. All right, Mrs. Allen helps bring athletics to life for families all across the county as she takes and shares professional grade photos of recreational and school related sporting events. I will add graduation as well. Don't um, worry, I'm going to be there. <laughs> um, her presence in photos during times that her, her own kids are not even competing help provide life and light for many people through the lens. Mrs. Allen is also an active participant on the Superintendent's Family and Community Advisory Committee. Her commitment to supporting all aspects of NCPS is evident and appreciated. So we want to congratulate you for being our April 1 Nelson Award winner. We're going to smile at this nice lady. Awesome. Thank you so much. <coughs> Don't walk away yet. And you this one. <coughs> and your one Nelson book. So I'm not going to unwrap it because I've found that I struggle putting it back in and I'm clumsy so I'm going to hold it We're going to keep it in there. Yes. yes. <laughs> I can appreciate that. Thank I appreciate you. that. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you very much. Okay. The next recipient is for our classified personnel. So will Ms. Regina Campbell please come up? <laughs> All right. So Regina is a go-getter. She is always positive and helps throughout Tide River Elementary whenever needed. The teacher that she works with often <coughs> shares how she is a gift to her and the students they serve. Regina goes above and beyond with any task that is presented to her and does it with a smile. She embodies the spirit of kindness and supportiveness that we strive for with all of our students and staff. Regina is an active member of our spirit squad and frequently provides little pick-me-ups for the staff. So we want to say congratulations, Regina. Thank you for all that you do. This is a small reflection, but there's a whole lot of things that you do for us, and we greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Congratulations. We're going to say Congratulations. Oh, wait. No. Congratulations. Got to get your mug. Thank you so much. Everybody needs a mug. All right. And last but not least, our uh, certified employee, Jillian Lanier. Will you please come up here? Congratulations. All right, Jilly Lanier is an amazing classroom teacher. She goes above and beyond to support her students every day. Her lessons are engaging and targeted to meet the diverse needs of her students. She also collaborates well with her colleagues and serves on many committees for the division. One such committee that she serves on is the superintendent's staff advisory committee, where she works hard to be an advocate for her school and the division. She's the perfect example of one Nelson. So congratulations. Thank you very much for all that you do. We're going to make sure we get these pictures for you. Thank you so much. Let me give you your line.
guess if people, we let people who want to go ahead and go, go ahead and go. So we'll let you do that before we go on to uh, the rest of our agenda. But of course you are welcome to stay. Congratulations. Enjoy. Yes, congratulations everyone. The rest of the meeting, which we all will. All right, our next portion is the comments from board members. Mr. Perkins. I just want to um, congratulate all the awards that was received this evening, all the hard work that was put in, and the attention to detail on that art was just awesome. Um, and I um, hope everybody had a good spring break, and, um, and I know everybody's looking forward to the last 34 days. <laughs> So, <laughs> congratulations to everyone. 31. 31, sorry. 31. All right. Uh, no one's I like one. <laughs> Thank you. So, I'll echo what Mr. Perkins said. Um, Laylee's art's incredible. I can't even draw straight lines, but to see that level of detail is, is pretty incredible. And congrats to everyone, Nelson Winters. You hear me say this every month, but I think that's our favorite part of the meeting, that um, people like Regina and Mary Catherine and Jillian the contributions they make to our system are often unseen and, and it just, it's one way for us to say thank you very much. Um, I also wanna welcome, we've got a lot of guests. We've got the American Legion here. We've got the Sheriff Embry and, and his staff. And then we've got Dr. Ligon. So thank you all for joining us. Um, we really appreciate that and um, look forward to a good meeting. So thank you guys, and 31 days. So I, I will add this. We're closing on budget season. It's probably not going to be a very fun budget season. So let's remember kindness and grace with one another and know that everybody is working really hard to do the best that we can for our students, for our staff, for everyone. So um, hang in there. It might be a bumpy ride, but we're going to get to the other side. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I think I would just uh, echo what you guys said. Um, Whenever we can recognize the work of our students, it's just so much fun for me. I don't get into the schools as much as I would love to, and, um, and art in the middle school was like one of my favorite things ever, so it just brings back really great memories of my school days. Um, also, I love the one Nelson, um, you know, I mean, it's just, it's really important, especially now when we know we're going into a really tough budget season or where we're in the middle of a very tough budget season that, that we remember that um, it takes all of us, uh, wherever you are, student, parent, community member, um, you know, to, to kind of do what we need to do here, which is to bring our children up to be great uh, citizens of our county and of the world. And, um, and it's just a hugely important job that we have. And, uh, you know, when the times get tight, you know, we have to really work together to, to provide that net for, for everybody. So um, I just echo the kindness thing. I think that's important. Echo the one Nelson thing. We're all in this together. Um, and uh, yeah, we will get through to the end. We'll get through onto the other side. So um, I would like to also uh, remind you that there is a public hearing tonight on a uh, tax, a proposed tax increase that starts at seven. So if you wanted to go out and say something and then come back, that would be okay too. <laughs> so um, it's just what I wanted to say. Um, and uh, so the next thing that we would go over is important dates. Um, I think the most important date just ended, which was spring break. Uh, also, the, uh, I hope everybody got to see the, uh, the eclipse. That was pretty fun. Um, graduation day is May 17th. Last day of school is May 24th. Um, 31 days. Not very much longer, so hopefully we don't get senioritis or anything like that, and uh, we make it through this year anyway. Um, I see my birthday is on there, so that's good. Um, okay, comments from the superintendent. Um, well, just to, to um, I guess, reiterate, we have 31 days left. We just came out of spring break, and it seems like every year the, the breaks go faster and faster. Um, but hopefully everyone had a much needed rest and relaxation because, you know, starting Tuesday when we got back, uh, hitting the ground running, I've heard a lot of um, reflections from parents and students saying, oh, they, they started out, you know, right away and, you know, didn't, didn't take it slowly. 
and, and that's because we don't have a whole lot of time left in the school year and it will go by very, very quickly. You know, for our seniors, graduation is on May 17th and any senior parent out there that's listening or seniors that will go by so fast. So enjoy every second of it. Um, additionally, we, uh, we do have Golden Governors coming up April 29th, which is always a nice uh, celebration uh, for our seniors, um, as well as uh, just finishing strong. Um, attendance is incredibly important. It's been incredibly important all year long, but it will continue to do so even more as we head into the end of the school year because this is when um, we have a significant amount of tutoring and remediation and finishing up uh, and a whole bunch of testing that takes place, whether it's AP, SOLs, all types of testing take place, and we really want to finish strong. Every day counts for every one of our students all day, every day. Um, so that's something that's super important. I want to reflect that. You know, the last week of school is usually full of a lot of great activities. Um, so I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing how we finish and finish strong and, and just having an exciting end to this school year. Thank you very much. Now we have comments from our student representatives. She's mentioning setting up um, something to raise money to help develop a new rec center. So it's really exciting, and having school like um, school like clubs and things show up there, um, work there. Um, there's also a show choir trip. Um, I know on May 7th um, they are singing and dancing at the school. So if you guys would love to come, I know it's some really good songs, and Coach have been working very hard. Um, and also just to echo graduation. Um, I know people are feeling sad and excited. I know I'm definitely feeling both, but I know it's going to go really well. Thank you so much. Both of you from the guys. Now we have comments from the public. Do we have a list of people? Yeah. Nobody signed up to say anything. Would anybody like to skip the sign up and say something? Um, now our next portion is the consent agenda. Um, any questions, comments, concerns about this? It basically consists of our second readings of a couple of um, meeting minutes, our registers for the month of March, and our financial report for the month of March. Everything's okay? All right, I will entertain a motion. I move that we approve the consent agenda as a whole. Uh, second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that passes. Did you get that, Tim? <laughs> just in case all right now we have items for information uh, the first is our meeting minutes from our last school board meeting March 11th uh, that's our first reading so if you have any comments questions or anything like that let uh, Tammy know uh, so that we can make any adjustments uh, and then after that we have our sheriff's office update Ms. Uh, sheriff Embry would you like to come up and do your thing Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Thank you all, and I've been looking forward to being here and speaking to you all. Do you mind if I turn and address the body, or would you prefer I just address you all? You're fine. You're fine. Whatever, Whatever makes you happy. We're not super formal. Yeah. Well, thank you again. It's good to be here, and uh, I've got members of my staff with me here tonight as well. So I, I come before you tonight to twofold. One, to update you on Air Department and where things are and how we have integrated Air Department within the schools. Um, and in addition to providing or asking for basically three requests, there are some things that we want to do. Uh, I had sent out, I don't know if you have packets in front of you, a, a letter that I had proposed, but I wanted to go into detail explaining what we're seeking, what we're asking for, the nature behind that, and then I'm happy to take requests on that. I want to thank the members of the American Legion for being here. I had spoken with them previously, had asked them to be here. Um, in support of an idea that we have that we believe firmly that they can assist us in in accomplishing this goal. So again, thank you all very much. Uh, just two days ago, we accomplished our first 100 days in office from January 1. Uh, it's been a very, uh, it, it, it seems like it's been a blur. It's gone by very quickly, but uh, we have done very well. I'm happy to say come May 1st, our office will be fully staffed. We'll have 27 sworn deputies employed with us, and uh, we are moving right along. 
Uh, as far as the school implementation, uh, you all may know back in late oil, it would have been right the first day back in early January when the second January spring semester started, we began a traffic control implementation. That's assisting buses getting out from both the middle school, the high school, crossing uh, US Highway 29. Uh, it takes several minutes um, to slow down or to shut down traffic, but uh, it, all we're getting is positive feedback from both bus drivers, faculty, and parents in doing so. So that was a very quick, easy implementation that's running very, very smoothly. So we're very proud of that. We're also able to do that both at Ty River, uh, using our SRO, uh, Mr. Brown, in the afternoon to assist with that. Uh, late last month, I believe it was on the 25th of March, we were finally able, we were able to get a school resource officer in Rockfish. So uh, we have a very nice young man, uh, Deputy James Walls. He joined uh, our team at Rockfish Elementary and we are getting nothing but praises, uh, both from parents and from faculty and staff about uh, having Deputy Walls there. So uh, all four schools are, are staffed with uh, SROs. Uh, earlier last month, uh, our office went, we participated in Read Across America Week uh, for the entire week. Uh, Principal Coughlin is here. We actually saw her today. Uh, thank you for letting our office come back. We, I had reached out to uh, Ms. Coughlin. Our office enjoyed it so much we wanted to integrate our dispatchers. Our 911 dispatchers asked if they could participate in that too. So we set something up in I believe five or six classrooms this morning and uh, kids loved it. We loved being there and we would love to continue that if not on a monthly basis, perhaps a, a bi-monthly basis or every other month basis. And again, it's just to, just to let the kids see us and us see them, and we think it's just an absolute good program. Um, moving on to the reason, some things that we want to do is school is, uh, school is coming to a conclusion here very shortly in May. Uh, there's some things that our office wants to do. Things are going very well, but we've got a lot of other work that we want to do. My objective and my job is to make the county safer, both for our communities as well as our school children. One of the big things that we want to do, we need our office to be prepared. This is not an easy conversation to have, but an active shooter scenario or a mass casualty event. As school is coming up to a close, I've, uh, and thank you, Dr. Hester, we've had multiple conversations about this and other school related matters and it's a pleasure to work with you. But in speaking with Dr. Hester, we've uh, identified uh, Rockfish Elementary as a school that will not, it's my understanding, will not be participating in summer school curriculum. So what I would propose and like to do, this is a training evolution both for the Sheriff's Office and I would also like to incorporate our emergency services personnel, our fire and EMS. Learn the facility, train together in addition to Wintergreen Fire and Rescue, Wintergreen Police, and Virginia State Police. And the reason we're doing this is to make sure our agency is absolutely prepared for any kind of mass casualty situation, God forbid that it ever happened here, but if it is, I want to assure each and every one of you that our agency is prepared for it professionally, um, quick response, and to be able to safely take care of our children and our staff that's in our schools. So what I'm asking for is for the month of June, several dates, I don't have them in mind, is that if, if, if the board approves this, specific on the dates, but several weekdays in the month of June for our agency to train with the state police, Wintergreen, and possibly active shooter trainers from other agencies, that being potentially Waynesboro and Stanton Police that have volunteered to help us, in addition to at least one weekend during the month of June at Rockfish where we can have volunteers come in to help us with that program. That's request one. And I'm happy to answer any questions on that or at the end of my presentation, whatever you prefer. Request number two. I want to bring back to this county, it's my understanding that we found literature uh, from back during the uh, Sheriff David Brooks era. There was a cop camp here in Nelson County. I want to increment a cop camp for our children. That's why the American Legion here is, is here tonight. I want to consider doing this while summer school is in session during the month of June. We would isolate, and I've, I've isolated the week after Father's Day, I believe I've got it in my letter of, of whichever date that is. It'd be a four day program, transportation to be provided by Nelson County Public Schools, um, to and from pickup, meals we can discuss. Um, but we have sponsors, we have folks here um, in our community, we have business leaders 
uh, private owned businesses that would like to sponsor this program. Um, that would be providing t-shirts for our kids. Now I've isolated the target group that I think would best suit us and that would be grades three through five. Um, I, I, it, I was going to open this up to everyone. Uh, this would be by application. It would be both uh, submitted to our office. We could set it up online or people could come in in person to do so. Um, I've identified at least eight chaperones from our office, myself included, um, that would be there Monday through Thursday while this is ongoing as supervisors to these children. Um, Ty River would be, since that is active, that would, we would have to isolate somewhere. We can figure out the logistics on that, but that building would be used at least three of those four days. The fourth day, I would like to utilize a field trip. Thinking something local, possibly uh, Montebello Fish Hatchery or something along those lines that we could do again. Public transportation would have to be available for that. Um, what we're looking to do is, we're looking again to introduce ourselves to our youth provide our youth something to where they have contact with us as law enforcement. During those three to four days, we can easily talk about advanced drug awareness, bullying, anything that affects our children. Um, it's something that I believe that this county needs. Uh, we need to implement it. We have the resources to implement it. Again, I acknowledge the American Legion here is, is here tonight. These fine folks uh, participate in uh, the American Legion Boys and Girls State of Virginia. That program is going on uh, the weekend, pr the week prior to the week that we selected here, and it's actually, it's, uh, it, it, please correct me if I'm wrong, folks, but it's actually run by uh, Boys and Girls State, is actually run by the American Legion. These fine folks are here from our local charter, that being Shipman, and they have, they are all looking to volunteer to support this program, to be there with us side by side, hand in hand, to do whatever that they can do pro bono to help us with this event. Uh, they believe in this, I believe in it, and I believe our office. We need to get on very quickly, but I know that we can, with the right leadership, and I've got a team that can get going on this, we can get this done. And uh, we're gonna start small scale, and then we'll see how this goes this year for one week. And uh, no doubt it'll be successful, but we can certainly learn and grow from it in, in future years. That would be request number two. Request number three, uh, National Night Out. <clears throat> don't know if everybody's familiar with National Night Out, but I believe it is recognized Tuesday, August the 6th of this year. What I want to do would be utilize the exterior grounds of both the middle school and the high school. Other counties do it. I want to bring it here to Nelson County. It would be one night, one night only. Again, we would figure out the parking, the logistics, but this would be open both for the Sheriff's Office, Virginia State Police, Wintergreen, all of our local volunteers, we use it again to introduce us, our agency, and the other volunteer agencies to the community, introduce the community to us. We would have, uh, state police would easily be able to bring in some of their apparatus and do a demonstration. We would be happy to do a canine demonstration with, with the assets that we have within, uh, within our department. And we're looking for a three to four hour event um, on school grounds, not to interfere or conflict with any athletic with the athletic facilities or any athletic teams that would be training for the fall semester so that's where we're at these are all doable events um, they're things that we I, I we need to have and we can easily incorporate uh, i'm happy to answer any questions that we have that you all have the board or anyone here in the public Great. I love the idea, you know, one of the things we've talked about is, is having more collaboration within our community and with our community groups that benefit our kids in the long run. So I, um, I'm appreciative of all that you are definitely trying to do. Um, with the COP team, the one thing I would ask is if it is during summer school and we have an active population of kids three, third grade to fifth grade. Yes, ma'am. Um, I want to make sure what the impact would be between those kids that might want to do COP camp, but how it would impact how it would impact. We, we have that conversation about we don't want to have competing. Right. Um, and that's that's the, um, <clears throat> years ago when this was done, it was back when our, our summer school was half a day or part day. And then I think they had the cop camp afterwards. And so that's something we're going to have to navigate and figure out a little bit about. I don't, I don't want students who need to be there for mediation um, to go do something um, equally as fun but different um, as summer school, but also 
That's, I don't want to necessarily take away students that could be going to cop camp and having a good time. Um, so there's competing entities, but that was something we did bring up that, you know, it is something that we're going to have to try to figure out. I'm, I'm in favor, and I think if we can be flexible to find a way, because I, I do think that's a great age to expose kids to positive policing, right? Like yes. That, that, and so I'm, I'm definitely in favor of that. Um, so you would use the school buses to get the kids, to transport the kids back and forth? Hours, same hours for summer school would be utilized for cop camp, so pick up and, and take home, yes ma'am. Okay. We would meet the kids as they got off the bus there at the facility at the time. Our entire group and team of chaperones and all of our chaperones, we would do background checks on, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure your team's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the National Night Out, again, I, I think I, I love that idea. Um, just the conflicting. When do we start school? It's open house. It's open house, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that may, that may be that may be exactly, and, and that was something we talked about, like we may have something going on, we talked about open house, but um, he also <clears throat> presented the fact that this is outside, and the use of maybe certain strategic areas of a parking lot to, mm -hmm. to demonstrate and be able to put on display the multitude of vehicles, or, you know, just being able to kind of show off the different things that they have, so again, um, trying to, to navigate that and be able to work through that, um, it could work out really, really well because we want a very large presence at our open house. Um, and it, you said it would be for a few hours. And so yes. um, that opens up an opportunity for people to be able to participate, whether they're leaving open house or coming to open house and doing different things. So that is something that we also <clears throat> had, um, had a discussion about. That would be, I, I like again that idea of that community collaboration to combine things, but logistically, you know, we would prioritize the, the education portion of the night in my book. But again, Dr. Hester, we'll take, I'll take items from Dr. Hester and her team on what, what they're going to do with it. I, I love that piece. Yeah, I mean, I don't have any issues with any of it either. It's just coordination. As far as I'm very good, very good. like a giant budgetary impact, which we'll discuss. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't, I don't foresee that. I, 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 I want it to be free to all children. I, as I looked back at literature before, um, I know years ago under previous administrations, they were charging each child $30. I want to avoid that. I think that we can accrue enough donations mm -hmm. from local folks. We would have to put that out uh, pretty soon. Um, about people that want to that want to donate to this from small business owners, I think we'll be just fine. Your team's done a good job of getting food donations. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And the community wants this. Just in just in the feedback that I'm gathering out in the community as I'm talking. That's great. <laughs> the active shooter training that's not specific to that school. That is just a generalized active. <coughs> Over time, I would like to utilize each school. The reason being, we need to learn the layouts. Air, air folks, obviously our school resource officers know them. Um, over time, I would like, and we had this conversation with Dr. Hester earlier in the week, I would love all of our road patrol guys, because we've got a lot of new faces here in the county in the last 100 days. I would like them to be able to come in and just visit, learning the layout. That way, when you're under stress and Hopefully nothing ever happens, but when you need to get somewhere and you need to know the layout, we need to know that. That's why we would train in different, I've, I've isolated and identified rockfish during the time period. School is out, Tide River is obviously <laughs> occupied. Um, this would just be, it's a smaller scale, but we need to start somewhere. Well, it's, it's almost exactly the same layout as Tide River. Anyway. Yes, ma'am. Um, could we use those, um, those mapping <coughs> to you know, share those? Uh, yeah, because they digitally map all of the schools, so you might be able to use that just for familiarity yes. as well. So, I'm going to keep cruise through the schools. Yeah, we had a nice meeting, oh, was it Monday or Tuesday, it was where Monday. we just talked about different opportunities <clears throat> to <clears throat> develop the familiarity. Um, and so in an event of an emergency, you don't know who's going to be the first on scene, mm -hmm. and so the more that you know, it's, it's great that we have our SROs, but the more familiar, um, uh, Captain Mechie? Yes, ma'am. All right, Captain Mechie and everyone has with his road crew being familiar and, and not, um, it, it's not so alarming to see another deputy walking around. They're getting familiar. They're, they're building some relationships with our kids, so it's not, um, 
it's it's more of an understanding of support and partnerships and and um, you know trying to build those relationships up. So I think that that's important because whoever whoever does show up on the scene is going to be critical. Um, and the greater understanding of the layouts and things of that nature, the better. The the seconds count, and it diminishes the amount of seconds that go by because they're already aware. Thank you. One other question I had about that is, um, you know, do, do our school staff and our safety plan kind of run through, you know, kind of that that um, test too? I mean, would it be beneficial for some of our staff to participate in that just so, you know, we have our safety plan and then mm -hmm. how does it mesh with what your training would do? And I don't think it's a terrible idea for our our staff to have so, so my recommendation I would encourage it I would actually encourage them we would be looking for volunteers mm -hmm. uh, role players if you will mm -hmm. that would be um, potential and I, I hate to I use the word lightly but potential casualties or victims mm -hmm. so that our EMS personnel can one it teaches them first aid and again it's at this point it's it's survive and get folks to safety and, and get them to emergency medical attention as soon as possible but we welcome any staff that wants to work with us um, for for their own benefit mm -hmm. but to we welcome it I mean they would be involved too I mean if something were to happen yeah. God forbid. I mean it would be on a volunteer basis for them we're yeah, not going to force that but I would encourage it and welcome it okay that was my question and this is a nice initial start to yeah. um, <clears throat> expanding the trainings you know we had SROs work with our staff in the beginning of the school year um, to go through various emergency, active shooter emergency situations, and this is a, 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 an iteration and a next step of how we can continue to be prepared. And, and we're already working to set up um, dates for a safety task force meeting to get emergency services to go through safety plans to be able to be familiar with how things are done and, and have it be best practice and, and awareness. And there's a lot of initiatives coming down from the state as well and how to standardize these things um, to to um, decrease response time. Sounds great. We need, our kids need to see our positive partnership with Absolutely, you all. I agree. So that the first time you see them is not with the blue light flash and that you know who they are, you know who their families are. And Absolutely, we, we Absolutely. There, there's one other topic that was not listed in the letter that I had sent you all that if we have a couple of minutes, I just I, I want to bring it to your attention. Something we would like to do. Um, we're a very unique department. We, uh, we're a very small agency, 27 sworn personnel, but we have, uh, we're, we're blessed to have some canine assets here that the county hasn't had in the past, at least strength in numbers. Um, anybody that follows our Facebook page, we have four canine patrol dogs that are certified. Three of them are narcotic trained dogs. The other one is an explosive canine dog. What we would like to do, we are offering, and again, this is for the, for, to make our schools safer, to make our, our campuses safer would be, um, and of course, with your consideration and blessing, would be looking to utilize our explosive canine dogs. We, we currently use them on our courthouse facilities, one as a training exercise, and two, um, it was a judge's request to do it here on this to make sure, one, that there's no, um, there's no threats to our building or anything like that. We can easily do that um, weekly at air, air schools using the explosive canine that would not interrupt, this, this would not be the dog coming into school, this would, be the, this would be the handler. The handler's not here for that particular dog, but I do have an officer here that could explain the tactic that we would do. But that would be utilizing, making sure that there's no exterior threats on any of our schools. Entrances, exits, and again, not entering the school, no classroom disruption, nothing. You wouldn't even know our officers were there unless there was a problem. And then obviously Dr. Hester would be the first to be notified. The other, we have, three, we have three narcotic detection dogs. And what we would look to do, and again, um, I understand that school is in session. We don't want to interrupt classrooms. We understand that there's a reasonable ex expectation of privacy. We're thinking about the parking lots. We want to make sure that there's no firearms on campus. We want to make sure that there's no illicit narcotics um, beyond the scope of what has recently been legalized in the last couple of years for, um, to, to be completely specific but we now this agency has the the opportunity to do that we have the assets here to make our ground safer and we have the opportunity and we have the again the assets and the handlers to be able to do that but I wanted to present that to the board this is just to open and start the conversation 
potentially for something that we could offer and do next year. And again, I, if, if there's any questions, this is, just, this is just making you all aware that we have this. The goal and the scope of this is nothing more than to make sure that our schools are safe, non-disruption of classrooms. Suggestion heard, and we will discuss, I think, unless somebody has something to say right now. No, so do we need any action on those first three things or just an intent to further yeah, discuss it? Yeah, I think we don't need to act on any of it. I think that, I think we consent to it, or I don't even Yeah, it, it, it's a matter of the partnerships and things that we use yeah. and, and f building facility use that we right. take, take care of. And I'm happy to provide Dr. Hester or anybody with the exact dates as we get closer. Absolutely. Gladly. She'll tell us if we need to know anything. Uh, we may be come and be your victims. Give me an excuse to lie down in a hallway somewhere for a while. I think that's great. I have a question concerning the dogs. Yes, ma'am. Uh, will they be at the event in August? So that the kids can see them, will they be allowed to interact with the kids? The, the national night out? Yeah. So we've done multiple canine demonstrations um, at, at small youth groups. Uh, we had one just in the middle school at the career fair the other day. Very, very successful. The kids love the dogs, so yes, they will be there. And if you're looking for other bodies for role players, have you talked to the uh, Medical Reserve Corps? I have not, no ma'am. Mm -hmm. Those are folks, I'm a member of that, so I'm, I'm not medical per se. I'm just your average ground I haul things for them. But you've got people that you can get from them who probably will need role play. Welcome in. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, thank, thank you very much. Love the obvious. All right. Um, the next part are the the SBA policy updates, and um, this is a second reading. The ones that we have on the list are the ones that are mainly spelling errors and, mm -hmm. and just corrections of a word, very, very simple. Everybody's read them and are familiar with them, no questions or anything okay. like that. I think that we can um, make a motion to approve all of them in one fell swoop. Thank you very much Thank for attending. Thank you all for coming. Nice to meet you. All right. Yes. So I make a motion that we approve. Do that the items for action. Huh? Do that the items for action. Sorry, man. Are we supposed to do that in items for action? Yeah. All right. Okay. Sorry. I was just going to go ahead and do it. Yep. Um, all right. She's, I'm jumping ahead. Uh, all right. So April is VSBA Workforce Readiness Month. Um, there's a big long thing to read. Would you like for me to read it? You can read it or. I can make Ms. Powell read it. Okay. So, Nelson County Public Schools, April is Workforce Readiness Month. Whereas workforce readiness is essential to developing skill sets for students in Virginia's public schools to be successful beyond high school graduation, and whereas the demand for highly skilled jobs over the next decade in Virginia will continue to increase and can be filled by qualified public school students. And whereas we recognize increased collaboration with business and industry, the community college system, and the core school setting is necessary, and whereas the promise of public education is for every child to be successful in school and life, and whereas it is important for Virginia families, students, teachers, and the school administrators to be actively engaged in supporting the importance of workforce readiness as part of the educational experience, and whereas we recognize that limited funding resources, facilities, partnerships, and qualified CTE staff impede student access to workforce readiness opportunities. And whereas the VSBA has established a workforce, a, sta a task force on workforce readiness to make recommendations and to stay at the forefront of these discussions in Virginia schools. And now therefore, the Nelson County School Board recognizes the month of April as VSBA Workforce Readiness Month. And April 16, 2024, as VSBA Workforce Readiness Day, with the intention to advocate and increase awareness about the supports necessary to promote workforce development opportunities that enable students to be prepared to succeed in a global economy. Recognize this 11th day of April, 2024. Thank you very much. 
Um, now, Mr. Campbell will provide us some updated information on our capital improvement plan projects. Have a few updates today. Um, some exciting updates, rather. Uh, Ooh, so like the, the new chiller that we, in, we purchased back last January is, is now up and running. Um, we had a, a representative from Carrier came out and they tested the equipment and they, they started it up and make sure everything was operating correctly. Um, Honeywell has started on some of those smaller, last month I was telling you guys that we we're trying to get some of the smaller equipment, so the larger equipment has such a timeline to, to, to ship. Mm -hmm. So some of the smaller equipment now is starting to, we installed them, <laughs> as you see in the first picture there, that's one of the, that's the elevator room where we have to put the, the one mini split unit uh, before we put the new elevator in place. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, the larger equipment, the ship dates are still way out. And that's still going to put us into 2025 with phase one of the project as well. So phase one and phase two is likely to intersect somewhere, yeah. overlap. So uh, the CTE overhead garage doors are installed and uh, they are working well. Everybody seems pretty happy with those. Uh, they look really good. Yeah, they do look um, good. Yeah. The auditorium lighting, we had originally scheduled to start that spring break week because of some shipping dates on equipment, we had to put that off. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course, the end of the school year is very busy. The auditorium has been used a lot. So we decided to set the date of June 1st. That gets us past graduation. They can come in and then install the lighting then. So, um, and the athletic field complex, the, the control panel, the electrical panel has been installed. Everything is up and running on that. Uh, what's really neat, and Mr. Mullins really appreciates is we can operate those lights just like we do the baseball field, softball field lights. Now you, we literally can turn them on and off with our phones. So it's it's a really nice feature. So I did that on my building too. It's nice. It makes it nice. Yeah. yeah. So he can put in schedules for the football nice. games. He can preload the schedules up, and then it just automatically come on and come off too by yeah. schedule. So yeah. that's really nice. It's real nice. That's what I've got so far. All right. Any questions? Any it was super easy. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Absolutely. Really, thank you. Thank you. All right, Ms. Douglas, now it's summer learning time. Already, 31 days, 42 days. Yes, sorry. Um, so I'm excited to say that it is time for summer learning. And you, if you want knowledge acquisition, free transportation, free food, breakfast, and lunch, if you want a summer camp environment, you want to come down with an open library, book, bus, Title I reading support, ESL special ed services, if you want to have reading and math remediation, enrichment act activities, STEAM opportunities, then join us because it's going to be a lot of fun in K through 12. So I'll read from you the All in Virginia um, document that states that a sample school division could have an students attend summer learning with an additional 7.5 hours up to 7.5 hours of tutoring per week for a camp that they attend. Um, students must attend camp for a full week of reading or mathematics and students choose an enrichment pathway like theater, art, or coding or spend two hours on that daily. That's what we've been doing the last couple of years. We're ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. So our program looks just like that. So I'm excited to say that and we're offering that again this summer. Um, where we'll have reading and math opportunities in the morning for our remediation, and we'll have that STEAM opportunity in the afternoon, which might fit with that cop camp situation. So that'll be good. Um, for summer learning this year, we have June 10th through 27th. Again, that's 8 to 3, a full day. Um, we'll have that at TRES for Ty River for both elementary schools, and then we'll have the complex for middle school and high school for other programming for secondary. Um, elementary and middle will offer the scholars program for remediation. We'll also have that um, enrichment opportunity for grades two through five, the Excel Academy. And then the high school will have remediation and credit recovery for ninth through 12th graders. And then the middle school, of course, would have remediation. And then we'll have that CTE Career Academy um, for grades six through 12 for middle and high school students. Um, we'll also offer a Booster Academy in July. So it'll be July 22nd through 25th. 
Um, so we're excited about that opportunity as well. Um, this year we're doing something a little different. We have a little twist. Um, when we, I know you've been hearing about our profile of a graduate. Um, so we're working on developing that and rolling that out for next year with our division. And we're promoting the skills necessary for success for all students to succeed in life. So positive and contributing citizens, global citizens. Um, and part of that is that profile of graduate development with the five C's. So we're working on communication, critical thinking, creativity, citizenship, and collaboration. And we're kind of folding that into our summer program with a central focus on the exposure and exploration of career pathways. Mm -hmm. So all of our programming will include career pathway opportunities. We'll talk about that and focus on that through remediation, enrichment, you name it. That's what we're going to focus on. So you're going to be able to find that our students are going to be learning about entertainment, design, and technology, tourism, recreation, law, criminal justice, um, cosmetology, child care, culinary arts, construction contractor work, engineering, marketing, nursing, archaeology, and agriculture. So those are the focus areas for all of our programming. So we're excited about that new twist for the summer. I do want to insert something <clears throat> after uh, participating in a listening session to the proposed uh, changes to the accreditation system that will take place in, oh gosh, a year and a half, two years. Um, there, they, uh, the proposed um, items are for uh, performance tasks. In theory, what they're trying to develop these performance tasks that are centered around five C's in career pathways and how do we um, have our students demonstrate their, their competencies in the components of the five C's as it relates and can sustain to student cho uh, selected um, pathway type items. Now it's it's through AI, but you know there's such a strong alignment to we've continued our work with five C's, which is incredibly important. I've said this time and time again, getting them you know career, college, and life ready with the core components of the five C's. But then how do we put it into action? And then how do we put it into action in a meaningful way? And so that's why I really really appreciate um, the alignment between the summer school activity the career pathway explorations down to the elementary level and that vertical alignment so there's a lot of strong aspects to this that just build on top of each other okay very good um, our budget for this programming will be funded by federal grants the state allocation for remediation and the all in Virginia funding so that's a combination there not from our locality um, and we'll also have donations from Wintergreen. So Wintergreen is going to donate $15,000, um, and they'll be donating that to use for a resource teacher in our programming, speakers, and field trips for our students. Okay. Any questions? No, they've been helping us for years, and they keep increasing the funding so that's been very helpful for us um, of course it's not guaranteed every summer but they try to get grants themselves and help us out in that yep. capacity we're excited for the summer I do but I love watching everybody else go back to school do you have any questions for me Online. I really love it. Okay. Okay. All right, you're welcome. All right. Thank you. I don't want to pay for that. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Douglas. Dr. Yarzabinski is going to tell us about the Perkins 5. Is that right? Perkins 5? Yes, ma'am. CTE Local Plan. Yes. Such exciting stuff. It's good stuff, absolutely. So, good evening. All right. So the 2425 Perkins 5 local plan and budget application obviously has included all 70 pages of it. So I'm not going to go through that line by line, but definitely hit some of the highlights. Uh, a major component of the Perkins application is reporting out our annual, annual performance reviews. So the APR is comprised of 15 standards, both for the collective grouping of all students within the graduating cohort and uh, students identified as being a member of a special population, such as a student with a disability, economically disadvantaged, et cetera. Um, I'm pleased and proud to announce this year we have met 15 out of 15 of our federal standards. So, longitudinally speaking, last year I stood up here and I said, we met all but three. The year before that, I said, COVID hit us hard, we didn't meet seven of them. So we've been on the right trajectory, and that's where we're going to stay. So some of the highlights, and they're listed there, some of the highlights within the APR 
our non-traditional program concentration. And I remember this being an, a major obstacle to meet the benchmark even when I was an AP at the high school in 2010. So last three years of data, we went from 10.8% to 12.12% to 39%. So we see some fluctuations with cohorts, but I think we are uh, definitely hitting the mark on this and will continue to do so. Another area that I'm pleased with are our program quality indicators, and this is CTE completers who cre also earned a uh, credential exam, a state-approved credential exam. Longitudinally, we went from 60% to 82% to 95%, and that has been the challenge I gave our, all of our CTE teachers at the high school, saying we get a completer sequence, I want the students to be sitting for a credential exam. Let me hit the mark, both for all completers and our special populations. The numbers pretty much mirror one another. And the other challenge I put forth to our CTE department was uh, work-based learning opportunities. And here's where we see some pretty massive improvements. Coming out of COVID, we were just below 10%, up to 38% last year to 46%. So work-based learning opportunities. While we do have our challenges being a rural county, uh, we can't hit, hit the mark on a lot of them with school-based enterprises and uh, with the uh, good relationships we do have with our community businesses. So, Moving forward, current CTE population right now, and this is grades 6 through 12, we're looking at an overall uh, CTE population of 687 students, 442 of those fitting into a special populations group of economically disadvantaged, 154 students with disabilities, and 10 homeless. Um, breaking that down into what we would call a non-traditional, um, these would be based on gender groups. We have 264 that would be enrolled in classes that they would be non-traditional. Um, looking at the special populations, these are very much aligned with our overall student population, and I like to analyze that to make sure that we're not identifying any barriers for students to access CTE programming. So. We're looking good. So moving to the financial component of the Perkins application. Um, right now we are applying for close to $40,000. Um, this, along with local and additional state funds, uh, will be leveraged to increase awareness and expose students, especially non-traditional students in, in all program areas. Um, we will implement some CTE summer academies to offset some of the costs, um, especially for our instructors. We provide career-related field trips to businesses and industries in the region, and we also include some transportation to clinicals, our internships, and job shadowing opportunities. Uh, we'll increase opportunities for credentialing and licensure attainment at no cost to students, and we'll leverage the funds to modernize and improve and expand CTE programs that are currently offered and the equipment used in them so that they're uh, relevant to current equipment used in the workforce. Um, and we're also looking to expand upon our CTSOs, these are our student organizations, uh, leverage those at even greater magnitude so students can have more hands-on opportunities, chances to network and compete and showcase their abilities across the region and the state, which Ms. Addison is doing as we speak. So <laughs> the actual numeric breakdown will be about 1,514 to personnel services and benefits. Again, this is what it would be to our uh, CT summer academies. 11500 for purchase services. This is for professional development opportunities for our instructors and CTE curriculum, including our ICEV software and program and CDX software used uh, at the high school, uh, both of which are also leveraged for students to sit for their accreditation exams. Uh, 1200 for internal services. This will help for transportation to our clinicals, uh, career expos, and other trips. And the remaining 219 uh, would be set for the acquisition of capital outlay and state equipment. So, again, 39199 uh, not a huge amount, but it does have a huge impact on the overall CT department and student outcomes. So, if you have any questions, I'm happy to field those at this time. The numbers are incredible. They really are. That's great job. Well done. Really well done. Uh, kudos to our CT teachers. Yeah. They knock yeah. it out of the park. I can remember sitting with Mrs. Joseph for some conversation. It was around the time that the kids were doing their cosmetology exams. Mm -hmm. She's like, check, check. I mean, and she was really on it, like focused on it. So, yes, they're on point. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think we can do that. Does anybody have any problem with us jumping the gun and let Daddy Ford come up and oh, do their sure. thing so they can go home? 
Um, we don't have a, is that is that a is that all right with y'all? I'm not gonna mm -hmm. oh, well. change. Uh, no. We should have voted to change it. Yeah. Yeah. Make a motion. No, I think it's too late for that. Yeah. Don't worry, it, it's okay. It's all right. Oh wait, we're coming out of we're coming out of in items of information into items of action. Okay. All right. That's the first. That's not just what you yeah. Sorry. Sorry about that. So That's right. That. Sorry, we did. Uh, we should have. You know what? I mean, normally have very short meetings. We <laughs> just hear what a great school system we have, right? Are you yes. kidding me? You've got to move here, have kids, and put them in the school. All right. Am I right? I'm right. Just put it on the list. Too blame me. Okay, sorry. Ms. Rachel Wertner. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> our special education annual plan. Tammy, not that one. been the same email as the plan itself prior to the There we go. Thank you. No, please don't. It's just fine. <laughs> Did you? Okay. All right. So, good e Okay, perfect. All right. So, I'm here to share with you all our plan for our annual plan for the 2024-2025 school year. As I'm sure you've heard in the past, the annual plan is really the formal agreement that we have between Nelson County Public Schools and the Virginia Department of Education on how we're going to use our special education funding known as IDEA funds. And so this is really a, a binding agreement that we enter into to say exactly how those funds are being spent. So there are several steps that we go through in the development of the plan. The first step was sharing this plan with our special education advisory committee and we did that on March 7th and gave them the opportunity to ask questions or to see how funding would be spent for their children. Um, and then we present it to you all for your approval. Following approval from the school board, it is submitted to the state and then we received the award of those funds in July of 2024. So this list is um, the components of the annual plan and I'll get into these more specifically on the next bit of slides. I just want to show that there are some on this list that also don't apply to us. For instance, we don't have any local or regional jails in our area and we don't have to set aside um, money for because of a disparity in identifying students of too many of a certain race or too many of a certain disability which is good all right so the first this actually new this year with our annual plan is also it's called GEPA or nicknamed GEPA it's the general education provisions act it's been in title plans for some while um, but what it really is is assuring how we are not only going to make our programming and services accessible for our students, but also um, really examining what barriers do we perhaps have that we need to make sure we're targeting and overcome to support our students. So it, our GEPA includes items such as making facilities accessible, involving the input of stakeholders, making sure documents are translated into different languages, you know, for, for individuals who need that support. Um, also, staff training is a big piece. Teacher recruitment comes into play and materials because we want the best teachers and instructional materials possible for our staff. And as I already shared, 
Uh, we don't have any regional jails. And we did, we do sh share a summary of the implementation of the previous plan. And by largely that previous plan has covered partial or portions of salaries and benefits for special education staff. It also has covered instructional materials and trainings for, for staff. So our maintenance of effort is uh, a charge that all school divisions have to ensure that they are spending just as much, if not more, on special education students as they have in previous years. So you can see the summary here that last school year, our state plus local expenditures for special education students was $3,310,008.29. And then our projected calculation for this school year is $3,459,324.28. So we're in the right direction of ensuring that we are spending adequate resources and funds on special education. Um, as I shared before, the, the CCEIS is when some divisions are required to take and save 15% to target towards an area of identified deficit, and we do not meet the criteria, thankfully, for that at this time. So our proportionate set-aside is funding that we are required to hold aside and specifically spend on those students who are receiving homeschool or who are parentally placed in a private school. Um, so what we had this number that is generated by the state and it is generated the twenty five thousand um, three hundred and fifty three dollars and eleven cents is generated based off our December one count and how many students we have identified that we are serving through a services plan through um, you know through our school division. We are also, this is new this year, we are required to separate these funds out based on 619 and 611. That typically has only had to have been housed in 611. 619 is for early childhood special education. Um, projected, we have one student who potentially will be receiving that support and the rest are of your school age services. So these are kids that are not in our system. They're that not in our system, services. correct, yeah. correct. And this money cannot be utilized for anything else other than these students. But it, it, we do use it, right? We do. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Right, yes. All right. So next I'll get into the, the big meat of the plan, which is section 611 and 619. And as I shared earlier, 611 is the school age services. It can cover really through 21, um, our three to 21. And then 619 is your early childhood special education population. So these numbers, the funding, and I'll get into the actual funding on the next page, but these numbers are also generated by the state based on our December 1 count. Um, so we are the plan we have not changed much of what we've already been doing is we are planning to pay partial salaries and benefits for eight full-time special education teachers the partial salary and benefit for one director of special education partials, partial salary and benefits for one special education administrative assistant and partial salary and benefits for two fte behavior specialists we are also using additional funds for instructional supplies, materials to support evaluations, and training materials. Our 619 funds, as you'll see, are a much smaller amount, and we're planning to use those for extended school year services, uh, materials and supplies, field trips, and mileage reimbursement for our ECSE teachers, because a charge that they have really is to um, in support students being in classes other than in the building, other than that small class, having them out in the community. Um, ready to so this is the breakdown of, you can see at the bottom, that total allotment is provided to us by the state. And um, one of the things that we can't do 
is supplant funds. So if we have teachers who have been paid with local funds, we can't slide them over to be paid for, with this grant. So the teachers who, so you'll see the personal services, that's the salaries that we would pay. Um, so $312,640.07. Then benefits is the next line of $121,247.51. Our purchase services are things that we contract out. For instance, we have allied um, AIS is now, of course, Allied Instructional Services, and they pr help support us with uh, hearing services and with vision services because we have such a small population that um, we can't support having a full time staff member dedicated to that. Uh, materials and supplies we have is $3,000, and other services that. Um, incorporates when we have to contract out. For instance, we've used some of that this year for um, support with psychological evaluations. So you see our total of $467,770. Then for our 619 funds, bless you. No, you're good. Um, that is broken down to our personnel services being uh, $3,844. The benefits, a lot of for 1,500 purchase services, 1,500. Um, our other services and are uh, 3,500, and our materials and supplies are $4,185. So our total there that we are allotted from the state is $14,529. So when you add for the total of the annual plan application, you'll see we'll, we combine the 611 Part B and the 619 Part B, as well as our, our proportionate set-aside amount. And so the amount that we are applying for through the state is $516,452.11. Um, so we take just a few reminders and takeaways through here is this application is for federal flow through funding for the use of students only those who have disabilities identified under IDEA. Um, also, it really does require local and state funding to meet the needs of students with disabilities. It's a it's an expectation set forth by the state and federal government. And also, in accordance with maintenance of effort, we are required to spend as much, if not more, um, as the local and state funds as we've spent in previous years. Lots of numbers. Any questions? <laughs> Great. Glad they're helpful. You're welcome. And I believe I'm up again. You are. For the uh, nursing. Or yes. The school nursing. You're good. Mm -hmm. All right, so I would like to present to you all, we, had, we went through a process, a uh, request for proposals to continue with our school nursing services. Um, we have been using Blue Ridge Medical. Every, uh, every four years, we need to go through the process of just putting the bids out there to make sure that um, we're not missing out on equitable services and, and to really see what's out there to see how we can best support our students. So we did receive 15 proposals, and the pro cost proposals, you can see, they really ranged by almost a gap of over $200,000. Um, so we, as a wellness committee, convened a panel for our top two, for the two organizations that did not require as much money um, from the division as the others. Our criteria when we were con comparing and considering interview responses and the materials they provided us was prior experience and support, their personal qualifications, the ease and use of their equipment, support services, and price. Um, Blue Ridge Medical Center ha was able to, you know, they, they showed 
that they were the best fit based on prior experience, including um, experience in supporting schools. The other company that we interviewed had not had any experience in the school division before. Um, support services, Blue Ridge Medical included our any clinic supplies, including uh, the disposal of sharps, was included in their price. Um, the uh, another company that we interviewed hadn't um, included that in their price. Additionally, uh, Blue Ridge Medical's price was the lowest. So, all right. So another, there are also many other reasons why we really favored Blue Ridge Medical um, during our process. They have, they've been able to maintain four registered nurses in each of the schools. Not only that, but they have, this time, based on a grant, they have a part-time nurse. They have substitute nurses that they typically are able to work schedules around so that someone is pretty much always available. And in fact, even today, um, we received an, a message from one of our buildings where we, they were down a nurse and Blue Ridge Medical was able to work a solution out in order to help support the school. Um, the director of nursing is furthermore working to uh, use the nurses who are at Blue Ridge Medical to come and help fill in at the building so that we have a bigger, uh, bigger supply of nurses who can come and support us in the schools. And they also have a credentialing specialist that ensures nurses are up to date with all of their requirements. Um, Blue Ridge has also really voiced and we're working on building that community partnership with them this year. And they're, they're very interested in teaming with us to reach the community, bringing the mobile dental unit back. And um, they also, another win for Blue Ridge Medical is there are over 300 Nelson County students who are go to Blue Ridge Medical for their primary care. And so this allows for communication and consistency in healthcare. Um, we also, they also have contracts with our local health centers, which w makes it easier for us to be able to aim families and students in the right direction as needed. Um, all right, thank you. And I did touch on this earlier, but they do work collaboratively with schools, making sure that the clinics have necessary medical supplies. They absorb, they share that they will absorb the cost of if medical supplies, training needs, what have you, if those go over their, the agreed upon amount in the contract, they will, they, they will not increase our price and, and charge us extra. And I did already mention that they secure the medical disposal and waste of sharks. Any questions? That's how. Good job. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Down to our dynamic duo in the budget conversation. <laughs> All right. So we wanted to be able to provide uh, a budget update. Um, as of today, um, and uh, as been stated prior to, um, we are in a, a tenuous position that it, it is um, developing into a bit of a, a difficult budget season. Um, so we do have some, some dilemmas and some decisions and choices that we will need to be making um, dependent on um, what will be allocated to the school division. And so currently, um, as you can see, um, We've, we approved our budget on March 14th, and so that proposed budget um, was at a number that at that point in time, we didn't have a cal tool, we didn't have uh, um, a whole lot of information coming to us, and it was at about 1.855. However, since the General Assembly has um, agreed upon the General Assembly budget, and we were able to get a cal tool to be able to um, really be able to be more detailed and confident in some of those numbers, that is where we get the one, uh, $1,786,209, which is the potential shortfall that we could see between um, the items that uh, through what will be coming to us to the state and the items that we have requested versus our current um, budget. Our so current funding from the low count. The current funding from the locality, we would need an additional 1.7. Yep, exactly. So, the, so the, the immediate question would be, what, 
what is creating the situation for that type of shortfall and the increase in, in uh, requested budget. And the local composite index is a significant uh, impact on our budget and the gap that we see. Um, as a review, our previous LCI or our local composite index was 0.5888. It has increased to 0.6645. So what does that mean? What is the impact? As you can see here, as you outline it, it's broken down. I'm not going to read through each of these numbers because what I really want to be able to identify is every two years, they go through and they review and assess and establish an LCI. Um, the composite index had not changed, or had the, I'm sorry, had the composite index had not changed, and we were going off of the 0.588, we can see that um, column, and it would have, we would have realized $1.1 million. So that ultimately, you can see it at the top, and you can also see it in the bottom right corner, that due to this increase in the LCI, that has resulted automatically, before ever getting started, 1.1. Okay, so you can see the outline and the details of where you see the differences between the two um, LCI composite indexes and the difference. Um, some, you know, where the sales tax doesn't impact it, but where we really see, um, <clears throat> excuse me, some differences is the basic aid. Um, we do acknowledge that we've had some enrollment drops, but to the level of, of what we see the changes in the LCI. Historically, there's also been hold harmless funds provided or the, the locality in the division is not held responsible for the differences. That is not the case this year. And so that is why you see um, such a deficit. Any questions on that so far? We're good? Okay. All right. So using the 2019 base year and compared to 2021, um, it is important to note that there, we base our current funding structures now off of older data. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And so Average daily membership did go down. So when we talk about things that are impacting this, average daily membership went down about 10% um, in Nelson, but only 3.21 in Virginia. So we do see a drop in enrollment in not just Nelson County, but all throughout the state, all throughout the, the nation. Nelson's population changed. It did increase by 0.18%, while the rest of Virginia increased by 1.41%. So you see changes there. These next, you really see the impact where the value of real property increased in Nelson by 27.22%, but only 18.46% in the rest of Virginia. Add to that, all of these items are a part of the formula, the very complicated formula that makes up the LCI. The adjusted gross income increased 44.74% in Nelson, whereas in the rest of Virginia, it was 36.37%. So that is a pretty sizable difference. Taxable retail sales increased 16, uh, about a little over 16% in Nelson, but only 10% in the rest of Virginia. So we're starting to understand what's impacting, it's when contributing to the LCI. The second largest contributing factor is a local, for the local match and SOQ requirements. So I want to reiterate at this point in time that when we propose and we develop budgets, we work with our entire division to identify, one, we use data. We use the data that we have that we are relying upon, whether it's student achievement data, fit, um, operations data, all our data, we use that as a starting point. And we work with our departments to be able to identify what would be necessary, what would be necessary in order to be successful, um, what is needed to be successful. And I find that really important to be able to reiterate. That's what we base our budgets off of. So the largest contributing factor as we built this budget is a 3% raise. 3% raise was built in and agreed upon by the General Assembly and just recently approved by Governor Yonkin. I'll talk a little bit about that process in a second. So the 3% raise costs us approximately $675,000. It's offset by the contribution from the state revenue by a little over $143,000. I feel like it's really important to identify there are um, stipulations to providing raises and the money that the state provides. There are minimum amounts of raises that you have to be able to contribute in order to get that money. So I, I believe that the minimum is 1.5%. So if a 1.5% is not provided, then that means we have to give the money back. So I think that that's really important to be able to identify. The mandatory transfer to the textbook fund also impacted us by about $44,000. A second ESOL teacher, so those of you English as a second, um, or are, are um, English language learners in the ESOL program, there are specified built into the code per pupil ratios. Our ESOL population is increasing, which would require us to increase our teaching staff for that. That would require hiring another ESOL teacher. 
Um, DOE now requires a reading specialist due to the Virginia Language Act, uh, yep, Virginia Literacy Act. Um, there are built-in requirements, built-in the code of things uh, in SOQs that we will have to support in order to be compliant. And so Dow, uh, the DOE now requires a reading specialist in grades four through eight. Expected kindergarten classes to be larger in, um, in um, certain schools, we must continue to meet the K through three reduced class size ratios. We participate in federal programs. Title II is one of the programs for high quality instruction, recruitment of staff. We get money through K through three class size reduction because the research demonstrates that when you have lower class sizes, we're able to be more successful in student achievement. So in order for us to satisfy the K through three class size reduction, we have to have class sizes at a certain amount and, or we have to give that money back. We don't get that money. So something to think about. The General Assembly approved their two year budget and that was on March 9th. Then they passed, the, it's not on your list, so I'm just filling in here. On March 9th, then they passed the agreed upon budget for the General Assembly to Governor Yunkin. Then Governor Yunkin went through and made decisions on vetoes and legislative decisions um, and so pro provided a proposed budget to return back to the General Assembly March 25th. So come April 17th, the General Assembly is now going to go back through the changes proposed by Governor Yunkin as well as the General Assembly and will go through and redevelop a budget to, to put forward. So as of right now, we don't have a state budget. As of right now, we are not clear on what money we will be getting from the county because they are also in the process of building their budget based off of the, the General Assembly and Governor Yunkin. So it, it suffice it to say, we know what our needs are, but we're not sure what money we will get. And so that's why we transitioned to what, if we are not fully funded to what we are requesting, what are potential areas that would need to have decisions made? And I really want to reiterate, these are not in any prioritized order. These are just um, options and, and things that we need to consider strongly um, that could possibly be a part of cuts. So whether they are personnel, which is 80% of a budget, or other items, these are things that need to be considered. So again, these are not in any specific order. They have not pre been predetermined to be done. They are simply being proposed to you as items that we need to consider as we move forward in the event that there is a shortfall between what was proposed and requested and what we get from our locality. So first, eliminate, not first, but one of the first bullet points is to eliminate a potential new ag position that we had included in our initial proposed budget. Um, we would then continue and add back the quarter uh, position for our welding program to finish out uh, cert certifying, as Dr. Yarzabinski had talked about, that's really important in terms of things that we identify with. Um, that would then can discontinue in FY26. Another option could be eliminate a second behavioral specialist position. It's currently a contracted position paid through ESSER funds, which would be, you know, there are um, dollar amounts associated with each of these just to have a running amount so we can understand. Um, I also want to insert at this point in time, none of these are ideal. None of us believe that this is what we want to do. It is not ideal. We've structured a budget that is based on what we truly believe is what we need to be successful. So when we propose these, it's not ideal. We've stood here many, many times and talked about some of the challenges that we have in our buildings and behavior is a significant challenge, uh, not only in our buildings, but in the Commonwealth and throughout the nation. We're seeing younger, younger students coming to us with more and more um, the, the increased behaviors and the severity of behaviors. So we know that that's an issue. Another uh, item that of consideration is eliminate the salary increase. From, so that would identify $675,000 minus the 143 from the state because we would have to give that back. So that would not be money coming to us and it would also not be money we would be putting towards um, all 3%. Okay, and again, not ideal, but we have to identify the things that are potential options. Eliminate two middle school teaching positions currently vacant. So we are currently in a hiring freeze because we're unsure and unclear of the money that we will have, so we're having to make some decisions and consider options. Um, it is not finalized, these are, we're in a freeze, we're considering. Um, eliminate an AP position, vacancy is not filled currently, uh, would we need to reassign current staff? Again, not ideal, the whole reason why we added back the elementary principal was because our data, our experiences demonstrated that it's necessary. 
Other additional options that are important to consider, the ERIP program, that's a program that's designed to be able to support our retirees and continuing on uh, supporting, serv uh, providing services and support to our uh, various schools. Um, there are different levels of that, um, so that's something to consider. Driver's education, we know that driving, uh, driver education is an important component, not only to, to developing uh, the independence of our youth, but also the access that our youth has to being able to get jobs, be able to further their education, be able to just develop as an, as a, uh, an adult and a contributing citizen. Um, college guide programs that we have, other non-mandatory software. Uh, we currently have, ooh, hey. You have to touch it every once in a while, I think, to keep it going. Maybe not. Okay, so um, I apologize that you guys aren't able to follow this, um, but um, I'm going to go. Am I gonna go uh, okay. Stop touching buttons. Okay. All right. So, um, other items, we currently have three vacant custodial uh, positions. Um, Eliminate most non-grant funded travel or mileage reimbursements. Eliminate pre-K, again, not an ideal option, not something we wanna do, but we have to look at all possible things that we are not legally required to offer or uh, provide. Eliminate athletic trainer and sports medicine class. Eliminate classified position or um, consider furloughs. So, other even more options that we may have to look at is looking at different contract terms. Activity buses, again, all those things that can impact access and options and opportunities for our students. Reduce cost sharing of group health insurance plans and eliminate the 0.8 uh, full-time employee position, art position that we currently will, we will have vacant. Um, it's difficult to fill part-time jobs, but that is a position that's not taking it away from someone. It's, it would be vacant, so uh, that would be important to identify. Um, again, these were not presented in a prioritized order. They were not presented in a way that we believe that they're great options, but they, we have to consider some options. And um, being able to take a look at combinations of these dependent on any kind of uh, funding that has been allocated or not allocated. So those are the items that we wanted to be able to present and provide an update um, as, as best we can of, um, you know, April 11th. Uh, it, with the information that we have, this is where we are. Um, I did uh, provide staff of Nelson County Public Schools with a brief update on where the budget process is. Um, and again, not that we're fully aware of what the county has to be able to dedicate to us. And they're going through their process, but I feel like it's important for transparency for our, our um, staff, our students, and our community to understand uh, the current situation that we're in and potential impacts that can have on the operations and the performance and the overall environments of our, our uh, facilities and our employees and our students and our families. Would you like to add anything? No, I'm, I'm just wondering if I'm needed. You did a great job. You're always needed. <laughs> oh, Any questions that I might be able to defer answering to? Uh, Ms. Irvin. I don't have anything to ask. I just would like to <coughs> like not think about this again until after we get some real um, you know, information from the state. We're going to have a joint meeting with the Board of Supervisors at some point, so, you know, maybe uh, we bring, you know, try to bring some illuminating information to them, mm -hmm. not necessarily what we, what we might want to, where we might have to change our original plan. I mean, our job when we budget is to go, as I say it over and over again, is to come up with what our budget need is. These cuts are not what we need. And so we just need to communicate why we need it, what we need, why we need it. And and instead of saying what we're asking for a million six or a million seven more than we asked for last year, make sure that everybody knows that without us doing anything, the differential is a million and a half. That's that it was not something that we asked for extra. We did not ask for it. We asked them not to do that. We asked them to give us a mm -hmm. break like they mm -hmm. usually do and they didn't this year. So mm -hmm. it is nothing that anybody did that, 
that. It actually, the other thing that they call the LCI is the ability to pay. So it's the ability for our county to pay for our own school system, and that's what they try to come up with. We also know from that JLARC study that Virginia has historically underfunded its schools by using that calculation. And so there's some political actions we can all take to advocate for actual support of our schools the way it should be done. Locally, regionally, statewide, we can do that work. And mm -hmm. that's part of what you know we all should do as, as voters, as community uh, members, and, mm -hmm. and everything. So I appreciate your work and your work and everybody's work to you know do what you guys do for the student population i mean i think you guys kill it all the time and you and i i know that maybe not everybody in the community understands or appreciates but i think i make up for the those people by how much i appreciate what you do so <laughs> Well, I think, I, yeah, thank you. I think to clarify, the the 1.1 1 .1 is, yeah, through no fault of yeah. our own or the county, yeah. it's not uh, it's not blaming them. Yeah. This this is what happened. This was a development from, just, you know, the formula that was passed down through the state. So, and, and there are many conversations and meetings about the future of this, right. um, which is exciting to know that there may be a possibility that this transitions, but right now that's not very helpful. I also want to add, we've been in, in communication, I, I've, um, I appreciate the um, willingness of, of Ms. McGarry, County Administrator, to be willing to meet on a monthly basis and be very available. Um, and it goes both ways of asking questions and, hey, you know, can you, can you tell us a little bit more about this? And, and I, I've spent, you know, a great deal of time updating her, spent 30, 45 minutes today kind of rolling through some of this, like, um, this is where we are you know please understand this is the hiring season so if we wait until late may june to to you know to to figure things out it really puts us in a bind now to say that if we get to june and we're getting all the money that we that we need that's fantastic but that hiring window is very very critical so we've had a lot of conversations about um, what the numbers are about you know what's going on what are our needs and things and, and trying to update you know i know that they have requested to understand are we thinking about what possibilities there are if we if there's a gap um so that's kind of a, a genesis of providing some of this information is that kind of is a is a flag i guess of of are we considering this and we've worked really hard to make sure that we've we've looked at this and again not ideal None of this is ideal. I like to, I pride myself on, we're going to build a budget off of really what we need and we're not asking astronomical um, items. We could be asking for significant more um, for things that we want to look to the future, but we recognize what we're working with. And we, but we also recognize that we deal with the most valuable resource that Nelson County has, and that's our children. So I think that that's important. because MACA stepped out of that program after school, we've got you as our superintendent stepping in with other, with other partners and other staff of the school running that program at times. And I don't think people see that and understand the responsibility that our system has been given to take care of these kids. 
and it goes well beyond education, <laughs> well beyond. It goes, it really cre it's really the whole child. <laughs> That, that's being, that's really, the child, that child comes to school, that's exactly right. It's family that's services, exactly right. what, what is being put on our educational system in this county is family services, community services. Our facilities are used for rec programs, and we are not reimbursed for those things. You know, all of these things add up, and they come out of our budget at some point. So... You know, and we have a large and we don't generate any revenue, so we can't, yeah. you know, help ourselves with this cost. Well, I think it's important. Eighty percent of the cost is the personnel. These are the people that, you know, it's been demonstrated that Virginia does not fund schools, and the pay of teachers is not at the level of the national average. And these are people that um, are hugely valuable to us. Um, so when we talk about raises, it's not just to, to throw money at people. Like it's just to bring their incomes up just a, a little bit closer to being below the national average. And what worries me is when we have to make decisions about making ra or giving raises or you know having a teacher or something like that, I, I appreciate the staff that's reached out, like I can't speak for anything else, but I, I would rather forego a raise than a teacher. And I appreciate that um, sentiment, but I feel like we shouldn't have to choose between the two because that's how we value people. And right now we see educators leaving the industry because of a feeling of being not being valued um, whether that's money and it really the money part isn't even the highest on there it's the the feeling of being valued is having the resource it, it takes to do the job effectively and successfully the respect you know when we go through budget season we forget that these numbers and and what we get and what we can do is also a sign of, of trying to respect our employees and respect our children and respect our families and community and what we can do and i think it's just really important to understand is there's people on the other side of this and they need to be We're valued them. yeah We're yep. when we have these conversations yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Sorry. yeah and unfortunately you can see that yeah. um and they need to be valued and they need to be respected for the jobs that they do because they are services um and without them those results. So, all right. You just stay right there. I know. We are doing pathways to success and get to hear some good stuff. So, I think the the uh, the nice transition from going from the budget conversation is now I get to show you some of the things that what the uh, FY twenty four budget is helping to support. And so these are the celebratory items and, and showing the work that we're doing and what we're putting into it. But the first one, you know, Ms. Irvin, um, you know, has, has done a phenomenal job of being able to juggle, you know, a lot of adversity, but through it all has, has maintained a focus on being able to work through, um, and Davenport will be able to, and my apologies, uh, we'll buy you dinner. No, okay. Um, I'm kidding. I would. Um, is, it's, it's a finance-based time for us. Um, whether it's through uh, trying to finance projects or trying to build a budget. And so a lot of time in January, February, March, April is spent on the, on the budget. And so I appreciate um, monitoring the General Assembly and the active, activities that take place and just the budget process and the legislative pieces that go along with it. Also rebuilding a budget narrative. When we see all these things come and change, a 60-page document takes a lot of time to be able to go through because you really want to explain what's going on. And then also participating and working for the RFP for the, the nursing um, support that we have for uh, that you listen to the RFP. Um, Instruction, we still chug on. Like we've talked about, it's 31 days left of school, and a lot of great things are taking place. We, we were able to uh, hold the BRVGS presentations, and they were fantastic. You know, and I think we're going to try to take an opportunity to be able to recognize our seniors who do that because it's, it's that culminating project of their BRVGS uh, experience. We also appreciate the efforts of those who participate in the judging of that. It takes a lot of time and energy to be able to do that. Um, we have been monitored or audited in seven different programs this year. All of our federal programs have been monitored. The effort and resources that it takes to be able to do that and do that well is an enormous undertaking, particularly when you're as small as we are and have such a small central office staff that their efforts should be dedicated to supporting our teachers and our students and doing these other things, but instead they've got to spent all this time and focus on federal uh, reports that were all scheduled at the same time. So I appreciate Ms. Douglas, Ms. Um, Reuninger, uh, Ms. Choate, 
Ms. Irvin, Yarzabinski has participated in this. Everyone has participated, and, and even at times our administrators have had to contribute some information to doing this, and it takes a lot. So I appreciate the efforts. We've also had a great field trip, or a tag field trip that went to Charlotte Speedway. Um, a wonderful participation uh, opportunity for a lot of our fathers that were able to go on that trip. And so it was a great community, uh, kind, of, kind of family engagement opportunity, but a wonderful learning. Um, to then be able to come back and work on like their uh, soapbox derby uh, race was that yes yeah, so, so back so it's really really cool to be able to see the excitement that takes place and the parent involvement in that aspect we continue to have the Virginia Literacy Act preparations going through training sessions uh, to build the literacy plan um, we are ahead of the game on that and I appreciate the efforts and so we'll continue to, to kind of build uh, and we will then be required to submit that according to the uh, Virginia Literacy Act um, also uh, holding the the uh, quarterly data meetings so we make sure that um, we are um, on pace to meet our goals um, we've talked about this maca who had been providing um, not only our after school program but also providing our head start has um, transitioned out in a new organization cdi is working to transition in and um, take over those responsibilities. Right now, there's a, a bit of a lag because there's a license, they have to be licensed, and this goes through the U.S. Department of Education. Um, the new group is, is, being, is working hard to try to communicate with us and keep us abreast of what's going on, but that MACA um, situation has been very, very difficult. Um, I would say more so on our students and the families that have kids in that program because it was an unexpected um, it was an unexpected disruption in learning for those students and unfortunately we're doing the best we can to try to support it but it's not our program so we're going to work with CDI to be able to continue um, also uh, students participating and staff participating in VASCO PD for balanced assessments and also building projects um, also secondary science and math PD taking place we've, we've uh, conducted SPED instruction um, administrative check-ins at the schools and staff um, we've also had division improvement team meetings that kind of work, make sure we go through kindergarten registration as you see there in the bottom right so there's a lot of things taking place human resources as I mentioned this is the hiring season so there's been a lot of uh, recruiting fairs um, and participation in things to make sure that we bring in and recruit that high quality staff in all available positions attending Liberty and Lynchburg also um, Ms. Cho said she ran into an Elson grad while at the Liberty Fair and that individual will be uh, student teaching with us in the fall so that's pretty exciting um, we want to grow our own we want to bring our, our graduates back to be able to contribute to this cycle of, of um, the, the emphasis on that, that generation building of education and, and contributing back to our, our community. Um, the planning stages of the Golden Governors, which is always a really exciting event, um, and it's great, uh, top 10% of our senior class, but they also recognize the age educators that impacted them. We continue to interview um, and try to develop plans for our current vacancies, but as I've mentioned, we're in a bit of a, a hiring freeze for uh, many of our positions and maybe not all of them, but many of them. And uh, we have our retiree recognition coming up on May 11th um, at our school board meeting. Uh, pupil personnel, um, youth mental health and substance abuse presentation took place. Uh, we had individuals from the community and parents participating to be able to hear um, some information about uh, different data points for mental health and also uh, items to be paying attention to in a, a free dinner and there was child care at that so it was a really it was an informative time. Um, the wellness committee is beginning to in the drafting stages of a wellness procedures uh, committee additionally participated in a panel interview of school nursing services the director of special education um, and all the special education staff are having their one-on-one -on -one meetings we have some upcoming events that are fun tomorrow will be a tournament of champions located at louisa county high school um, where we'll have some of our sped students being able to participate in games it's a great event and also a family fun fitness night well that's a mouthful um, that will take place on thursday april 18th so that is exciting some events that we have coming up we have posted uh, the family fun fitness night on our facebook page and uh, really look forward to having some individuals um, participate in that. Technology, uh, we're continuing with the two-step verification plan. We also um, put on hold the, the school bus um, E-rate wireless just because it wasn't a good fit for us at this moment. It would have required maybe a little bit of funds and that's not where we wanted to be able to spend any kind of revenue moving forward, not really knowing what we're looking at. We continue to um, 
work on the copier, working on Canon Rico to determine what copiers would work best. Um, Oops, golly, during um, Halo uh, cloud demo with the Optech to evaluate an increase in efficiency of our devices. And then also Chrome um, demo IT, we are evaluating Chromebooks. We have uh, a cycle of replacements and need for replacement of some of our Chromebooks. It's been a few years. Um, they're not designed to last forever. And so we're looking at, um, looking at cases and looking at uh, scheduling and purchases for the 24-25 school year. Maintenance has been super busy. Um, as uh, Mr. Campbell outlined, we have the items on our CIP list and the items um, of maintenance that were in projects that we're working on. Um, repairing, repairing the baseball uh, scoreboard was important for a while. It was just not cooperating with us really well. The CT overhead garage doors, as we had pictures of um, earlier uh, in his presentation that were installed. The high school football field electronic panel, which was, it, it's, it's nice to have that put in and the flexibility of how we use it and the consistency. Um, also broken floor tile uh, that you see on the bottom right in the old wing. The wing that's been identified as a need for renovation um, for items because it's, it's 1955, as you can see that pretty uh, tile. So we've been able to uh, replace some items. Obviously, you can't quite match that lovely color, but we were able to safely replace some tiles. So um, we uh, remove any kind of hazards. And also, maintenance is getting busy for all the required annual inspections to be done. So we appreciate all their hard work. Um, transportation at this point in time, uh, you know, I appreciate the efforts of all of our transportation staff. They're all working. If they have a CDL, they're driving. Um, I was leaving uh, Ty River yesterday and saw Mr. Ashley pull up in his bus. And so it takes everybody to be able to make this work, and I appreciate that, that willingness to do so. Um, but they were asked by the VDOE Department uh, to, I'm sorry, the VDOE Transportation Department National Association of State Directors um, to conduct a survey on March 28th, so we put that forward. Also, transportation staff met on Tuesday, March 26th for annual spring training. So being able to review bus stop laws and regulations and tips and tricks for safe driving. And last but not least, food and nutrition procurement of uh, the review were, has been finished out and been closed. Uh, NCPS cafeterias participate in National School Breakfast Week. We talked a little bit about it last month. Local Granny Smith apples from Spring Valley Orchard uh, in Afton were served at all sites to the USDA program. Uh, March 20th was the Blue Ridge Co-op meeting in Harrisonburg. Also, um, the March 26th also served as the nutrition department provided meals to the mental wellness nights. So, you know, you have these these family community engagement events where we're able to collaborate within all of our departments to be able to contribute that, so I appreciate that. There's been a lot of positive uh, feedback given at the high schools and the student advisory meetings about meals served at the high school and the middle school sites, so that's been nice. And what I always like to do is share the data that we have on our serving. I wanna remind you that between March and April, we do have spring break. It was a little bit longer this year, so that's fewer meals that are being served at that specific time. So when you see the numbers 12,014, uh, it was a little bit of a dip from the February to March, but really not that much. So we are really able to serve our students with lunches at 19,989 and our supper meals at 625. So again, we participate in the CEP program where we ensure that all of our students are um, receiving the meals that they need in order to be ready to go uh, during the school day. And last but not least, just uh, it's been a something that we focused on as a division and something that we've asked all of our schools to focus on and it's the community engagement events. So you see the tag field trip that I showed earlier, kindergarten registration, both our middle and our high schools conducted a, a career fair where they incorporated agencies from within Nelson and also from the local areas. It was a really strong turnout and I appreciate the efforts in that for our students to be exposed to that as we continue with our emphasis on the, the career pathways and, and exploration. Uh, also for some of our seniors that may be looking to, to have a job as they, after they graduate. Uh, we also had um, the Thai River Math Night, which was a really kind of fun activity of going out and, and applying your math skills in a real life environment. Um, the cosmetology program is looking to, to expand its business, if you will, and be able to create appointments from individuals in the community. So we were able to kind of contribute some flyers for the kids to go out and take to be able to advertise the service that they're going to provide. Obviously, we uh, celebrated 
um, Laley earlier this evening. Uh, the middle school hosted a rising sixth grade orientation in which we provided information on that, not only in English, but in Spanish. Uh, Rockfish invited members from the Charlottesville um, Symphony to be able to, to play for the students and kind of show off the instruments and integrate the arts into that learning. Um, the wellness presentation that we conducted for our families and our community. And, um, Dr. Yarzabinski mentioned Ms. Addison being at the FC, and you all mentioned being at the FCCLA uh, competition. The picture on the far right is a part, um, it's a, a kind of an artifact, if you will, from one of the students' projects where they set up um, an educational kind of partnership with PVCC so our students could understand what not only PVCC, but what community college have to offer them, not just with a focus on college, but a focus on career. So this is a picture of our students going on a field trip to PVCC to be able to check out. And it really sounded like it was a great um, experience for the, the students that were able to make it to really have hands-on learning experiences and also to be able to check out um, the, the campus. We're working hard to try to create those types of partnerships with our institutions of higher education so we can provide our students with a multitude of future opportunities that aren't always only focused on four-year uh, college opportunities, but four-year, two-year, college prep, um, vocational, and uh, trade skill applications. And that is what we have uh, to celebrate, and that demonstrates a lot of the great things that we're doing that reflects the budget that we already have in place. All right, any questions? Good. Nope. Thank you so Thank you. much. Thank you. All right, now we are going to items for action, the first of which is our school board resolution for financing. So you are finally up. Thank you for your patience. Yeah, and I love your no problem. I, I promise this isn't the longest meeting I've been to. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's no problem at all. Um, I'm not going to take a lot of your time. I think you might have this in front of you. Um, I have hard copies if you need it. I think we've seen it. Yeah, I mean, it, I'll, I'll cover it quickly. I, um, so I was here back in February, gave you an overview of this bigger plan of finance that we're working through. Um, so after that, we sent out a request for proposals to banks. Um, we got four proposals back, and the winning proposal that the county selected on Tuesday night uh, was from First National Bank. Um, they offered an interest rate of 4.7%. Um, they are allowing us to draw down the funds as needed and you only pay interest on whatever is drawn down. Um, so there's, there's a lot of benefit there. It allows you more flexibility than what we were originally anticipating. We were thinking that you would have to pull everything at closing and, and pay interest on all of it. So they offered very flexible terms. Uh, the county on Tuesday night acted and selected them uh, as the lender. Yesterday, the EDA acted and uh, passed their resolution. Um, so tonight, you have a resolution for to consider. And really, what that resolution does is allows this financing to use Ty River Elementary School as, as collateral. Uh, we really don't expect this financing to be in place for more than about a year. Um, so uh, that's about all I have. Um, if you have any questions about it, I'm happy to answer. Um, but, but that's about it. Just so you guys know, I've listened to this presentation probably seven or eight times. <laughs> so through Board of Supervisors meetings, the EDA meeting, and some work sessions maybe, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Been I, here a few I've times. I've definitely heard it. So, and I don't know. Yeah, right. yeah it's, a, it's a great and feature. It, and it's for sh the short term. That's to right. Because we have some stuff we need to do right. rather than later. Right. And then we'll roll it, whatever we use, into the long term. Yeah. 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 All right, so um, no questions? <laughs> no. Can we you, entertain you don't a need motion to, to it's all good. Accept, adopt this resolution? And that's, I think, what yes. you say. I will make the motion to adopt the resolution presented by Davenport for right. financial resolutions. I'll second that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 So that passes. You're good. Sounds Thank good. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. She's worth a wait. Y
you make sure, it famous yeah. when you got Thank you very much for all your patience on your hard work and showing up. Yeah. And Hey, no, sure, no, sure, we'll be back at some point. Yeah. Margaret needs another presentation. I do. I didn't really understand PH2 very well. Thank you all. Okay, so we are approving policies that are not pulled out. Did you only do the policies on the policies that are in here to be approved are the ones that are not pulled out. Okay, perfect. I move that we approve the VSB. BA policy updates February 2024. I second. <laughs> um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Chair vote. Acting chair votes aye. Um, all right, next is the 2024-2025 uh, Special Education Annual Plan. Any questions on that before we? All right, motion away. I move that we approve the 2024-2025 Special Education Annual Plan. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And now we've got the school nursing, which we're really happy to be able to partner with our partners over there at Blue Ridge. And I make a motion we accept Blue Ridge as our partner in the nursing program for 24 25. And I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, now is the 24 25 Perkins 5 CTE local plan. I move that we approve the 2024-2025 Perkins 5 CTE local plan. I second. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Next, we have a field trip request for the FN FFA <coughs> to go to Virginia Tech for the state convention, which I think is a noble. I move that we approve the field trip request from F for FFA to state convention at Virginia Tech. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, now we need, um, do we have any paperwork on this? We don't need it. Um, the Virginia Department of Education needs an authorization of a signature in absence of the division superintendent. I believe that would be Shannon Irving, right? Who would be that person? Go ahead. I move that we approve the VDOE Authorization of signature in absence of division superintendent is machine of Irvin. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, and now I believe we need to go into closed session. We do need to go into closed session. The motion is in the board. I mean, in the desk person. Yes. Okay. I move that the board go into closed session to discuss and consider the personnel report and other confidential personnel matters as authorized by Virginia Code 2.2-3711A1 for purposes of discussion or consideration of prospective candidates for employment, assignment, <coughs> appointment, promotion, performance, demotion, salaries, disciplining, or resignation, resignation of specific public officers, appointees, or employees of any public body. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're now in closed session. Appreciate all of your Thank you guys. attendance.